so every year um, I like to make my exam predictions. So these are my P3 exam predictions for 2015. Um, I just want to say that I am not involved with the exam board in any way at all. I'm just a teacher. These are pure guesses about what's going to be in the P3 exam. So please don't just revise the things that I mentioned here. Please revise everything. Um, I've got absolutely no inside information. I don't know anything secret. Um, I'm just guessing. But these are my guesses. So they always like to ask questions about the eye. So it's it's a really nice question if it comes up because all you have to do is just kind of learn all the bits of the eye, learn um, what they do and how to label it correctly. So centre of mass and stability, this comes up quite a lot. And it can be asked in quite a few different ways. Um, the method for finding the centre of mass of an irregular shape is a great question if it comes up because it's going to be worth loads of marks. Um... And it's not actually that complicated. All you have to do is just remember it. But I think I reckon centre of mass and stability is going to be a good question. So there's going to be a big six mark question, and this year I reckon it's going to be about ultrasound and X-rays. There are loads of different things they can ask about this question. But previous topics they have asked on, and it's always worth going to learn these as well, are transformers, motors and cameras. But I reckon this year it's going to be ultrasound and x-ray. So there, there hasn't been a big ray diagram question for of a while, so I reckon that might come up. Um, for higher tier, you're going to be expected to draw the ray diagram. For foundation tier, you're um, not going to be expected to draw it, but you're probably going to be asked to identify the... Um, types of lens that go on um, and I don't know why I've just got a feeling that this year it might be magnification it's my very very quick sketch on magnification here um, and that'll be the object Um, if they don't ask you about ray diagrams I reckon long and short sightedness the causes and how to correct it might come up so moments, I reckon moments will come up, but I don't think it'll be balanced moments. I think it'll be a short question on moments, but the balanced question um, is going to be the A star. It's going to be a stretchy question because if that does come up, it's going to be really tricky. But I think moments is going to be a short question this year. So transformers, um, I don't think this is going to be the, the big written question. I think this is going to be the big maths question this year. There are two equations. It's really worth um, you being very well practised in both of them because they could combine both equations if they really want to make this a stretching A star question. So uh, this is P3. Uh, they're going to want you to really be thinking about it. So there's going to be an experiment. They're going to want you to interpret it. So know your variables, know what your graph should look like, know how to work out your means. Um, and take your time with this question. Take a highlight and highlight different parts and really think about what the examiners are going to be asking you. So I reckon there are also going to be three or four shorter maths questions. My tips are for lens power and the time period of a pendulum. But remember, always um, know all of your units for every single equation that comes up in P3. So these are my uh, top tips for the exam. P3, the examiners are really testing your scientific knowledge. So whereas in P1, you might get away with slightly sloppy use of language. In P3, you're not going to get away with it. Um, for example, ultrasounds are useful checking for fetal abnormalities, not for scanning babies. I know it's kind of the same thing, but there's a big difference in what you're actually saying there. Spelling scientific words is also going to be really important here. In the maths questions, show your working and give your units. If you make a mistake towards the end and you don't get the exact answer, the examiners can probably give you quite a few of the marks for that question if you've shown your working and if you've been able to actually... Um, uh, show the examiner that you've thought about it and again your units chances are they're going to be worth a whole other bark 
If uh, a maths question is given in standard form or index form, stick with standard or index form for your answer and stick to the same number of significant figures as the question is given. Don't try and um, write down all the numbers on your calculator, that's silly. Don't use recurring and don't just round everything up to whole numbers because that's not accurate enough. And remember to ask, answer the question that is asked. Don't start waffling about irrelevant things. Think about what the examiner is asking you. Thanks for watching. I really hope this is helpful. Subscribe so you don't miss any of my new videos. Share to help your friends get better grades. Any comments, corrections, questions or requests down below please.